first thing you've got to do, which I forgot about, is these Keystone uh, connectors, whatever you call them, you see where it le it gives it, it fucking. You see, you've got a you've got a lip there. Well, you don't want that. Oh shit! I've got the wrong one. Fuck it. Right, this is a brand new one. So you, you see, uh, is that? That don't look new to me. Fucking hell! I've got no new ones left. Here's a brand new one. Now, the things that you don't want, you don't want this this bloody this thing here. Because obviously you can't spot weld. If you spot weld in these, then you know. I mean, you could put a piece of wire through there, but just a piece of copper. That's fine. But I don't want that. So what you do is not not using a bloody a razor blade. <laughs> don't you dick? Get your pliers and just lift that piece up there like that, and then cut it. Uh, Where's my side cutters? So you get your side cutters and you put it like that. Oh, you try to. You put it like that and then you cut it off. Don't let that piece go because it could hit a squirrel or something in the eye. You don't want that to happen. So you cut that piece off and then you get your pliers, push them up there to where they actually no, because on the last one I did it like this. Push your pliers up there and flatten the bloody thing off. You don't want that. You don't want a, a lip on it because you've got to get as much contact as you possibly can via the spot weld. So you flatten that off completely. Do that on the positive and the negative ones so as it's like that. And then, I uh, can't show you. Yeah, I can. And then it goes on here a lot well it doesn't go on here a lot better it makes it harder actually but it goes on here a lot better and it's a block it's flush now so you can spot weld directly to it if you leave it with a lip on it it does make it it makes it a hell of a lot harder to spot weld to um so if you do oh i've done that have i done that no i'll do it to this i'll do it to this one i've cut the piece off there Literally all you do is just go along and flatten it with your flatten it with your pliers. If you don't want to do it, it's up to you, I don't give a shit. Right, so all those are all nicely done. Uh with no real lip on them. If you want to know why these are indented and these aren't, if you think about it logically, there's no other way of doing it. I thought about it and I thought what is it? I thought, fuck. <laughs> I thought about it and I thought, well, people are going to ask me a question of why, why aren't those, why aren't those flush? Well, if you think about this logically, they can't be. That's going to get your brain taxing, isn't it? So, uh, next thing you, oh, the first thing you need to do is 3D print them. As you can see, that isn't exactly level is it it's very slightly bowed it don't matter so the first thing you've got to do obviously is 3d print them i th i print these i print everything at 0.2 mil and usually around about 25 percent infill these are at 25 percent infill oh then you have to spend a couple of hours cleaning them up offer a good implement with these things although i never bloody need it is, is a nail file um if you just get a nail file in there when you're cleaning them up. They work perfectly. Just don't tell your missus, you know what I mean? She might think either you've got a problem or... Well, yeah, you've got a problem. When you've done that, you get your spot welder out, which my battery's just charging. So when it's done, I'll get it out. And then I'll get the spot welder out. This is 6mm by 0.2mm, I think it is. I hope anyway, that's what I paid for. Uh, you need to cut 10 of them to go through the slots. Now this is where uh, infill come, no, fucking hell. One word of warning with this, don't, don't have automatic support generation um, done on your printer because otherwise, because these have got holes in them and that's got to go through the holes, you're going to have trouble if you do. <laughs> uh, what you've got to do, 
the first one and they do take a bit of wiggling. Oh yes, incidentally, this is where you have to flatten the ends with a... Just get some scissors. Get some scissors, put it on the table and flatten them out like that. Just press down on it and flatten the ends out. You lazy gits. You've got to do it this time. So that goes through there. Fingers crossed. That one folds over there. I've got to try and do this and keep it in shot. Thanks. So that one goes over there. And that one goes over there. Did I mention that these are 103 mil long? I think so. And then we get the next one. And then that goes through there. This is hard to do without it being on the table. And that goes over there. Obviously if you're doing, uh, doing the half or the six cell one of these then you only need five strips not ten. Because if you do ten, you cut too many. Know what I mean? So that one, I've got to keep this in shot. That goes over there, and that goes over there. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then the next one. Because I've done one, two, three, four, five. I've done my six one. So that that one now becomes the the pack positive, and that one's the pack negative. So literally all you do is you miss, um, no, actually I designed it very well because there isn't a cutout for that one. <laughs> Something I've actually designed properly for the first time. <laughs> so you can't really get it wrong, although you can. And if you get it wrong and you set on a fire, it ain't my fault. Oh, I'll design this so as you can use 10 mil as well. You can actually use 10 mil wide nickel. If you use 6mm wide nickel, what you have to do is pull that up to the top so as you get all the contact, as much contact as you possibly can. Get it on camera, Tony. You pull them up to the top like that. I got that wrong, didn't I? That is the pack positive, and that is the pack negative. See, it's a bit bloody, it's a bit, honestly, it's a bit fiddly. Especially if you haven't got a very good... Um, Resolution on your printer, or it leaves blobs and strings everywhere. So, uh, right, that's done. So, now I've got to spot weld it all up literally, spot weld it all up.
Anyone who's got one of these Melectrics uh, spot welders, just a word of warning, well not a word of warning, just a tip. This is 6AWG wire. Uh, doesn't even get warm. Doesn't even get warm anymore. This one, which is the original here, still gets bloody hot. The battery doesn't get hot. This does get, this gets hot. These these aren't warm anymore. The, the ends, yeah, they get hot. But if you want to increase the power, well, it doesn't increase the power. Well, it will increase the power because the resistance will go down. Um, get yourself some 6AWG cables. You, you're probably going to have to uh, oh, oh, put my name there. You probably have to, uh, well, you will have to get your own ferrules or whatever. Anyway. For some reason, this one was an absolute nightmare to spot weld. The other one, these two that I did weren't. I don't know why, it kept blowing bloody holes in it. Anyway, it's done there. It's a mess, don't care. Now what I've got to do is put this lot away and then get the balance wires out. Design hindsight is a wonderful thing. I never thought about doing this. Uh, I've improved the design already. So I've got... You don't really need any thick wire. These are going to be the main power wires. Well, there's the main positive. Hang on. For this row here, this bank here on, the, on this right hand side, there's the negative. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to feed that underneath there. And I'm going to put that there. And then I'm going to do the same with the balance wire. This one here goes to the battery negative, this one here goes to the battery positive, so the only ones that you've got to worry about are those there. So, this negative one I've got to feed under there and connect it to there. But I'm going to have to extend it. So these, literally, where's the positive? There's the first positive. So, that wire there goes to the first positive, that one goes to the second one, that one goes to the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one, and then the battery positive. Which also, one of those is going to come off. Does that make sense? Well, I hope so. I ain't explaining it any other way. <laughs> I'm going to wire that up and I'll come back. It's now charging these 12 cells. Uh, I know I could have made these a bit shorter, but hey ho, it don't matter. It's like a big love heart. Just shows my love for what I do. I'm not gay. Oh, my name isn't straight. I've got to straighten that up. There you go. So, when these are charged, I'm going to discharge them. Now, I have actually charged, I tried this at four amps, and believe it or not, they don't get hot. Nothing gets actually warm apart from, the cells get a bit, bit warm, just off ambient sort of temperature, but nothing else gets hot. So this, this will actually discharge at 4 amps. Um, I might try it at 5 amps actually, just to see. So I'm going to charge that up, and then I can do a cycle test on these. That's exactly what I'm doing. You have to fucking meow now. I'm like, what? She's gone to work. Fuck off. I'm going to, yes, I'm doing a cycle test on, on every single, every single cell. There's 300 and, I've got a total of 330 cells I think I've got to do. So it's going to take a couple of years. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to leave a link in the, in the description for this. It's going to be on Thingiverse for this one and this one. So you can do that one as well. Up to you. I am bothered. I ain't changing it for you, you can fuck off.